So let's go back and talk about the nervous system. Now understand that the nervous system includes our central nervous system, which is the CNS, the peripheral nervous system, or the PNS, and the autonomic nervous system, or the ANS, right? So when I say the central nervous system, we can simplify it as basically the brain and the spinal cord. Now, the peripheral nervous system, on the other hand, contains the cranial nerves and your spinal nerves. And so when we talk about the autonomic nervous system, we are talking basically about the sympathetic or the fight or flight system or the parasympathetic system. Now, let's go back to the basic component of the nervous system, which is the nerve cell or what we call the neuron, right? And the neuron is basically the primary component of our nervous system. And it's composed of the cell body or what we call the gray matter and also our axon and our dendrites. Now, when we have an abnormal chaotic discharge within the neuron system of the brain, we call this a seizure, right? Now, there's two types of seizures. There's the general seizures, which is composed of tonic-clonic and absent seizures. And then there's what we call partial seizures. Mainly, it's either called simplex or complex seizures, right? Now, what we have to know for the NCLEX, important thing that we have to know is that we never use a tongue blade, right, when we have a patient with a seizure, nor do we restrain the patient and we make sure that the pad, uh, we pad the side rails of the bed. Now, let's go over quickly over medications. Now, the most common medication, obviously, we're using anticonvulsant drugs, but the most common medication that we need to be mindful about would be Dilantin, or what we call phenytoin, right? And with this medication, we do not withdraw suddenly, right? Because if we do, um, a recurrent seizure can occur. And usually, we administer this drug with normal saline. And we remind the patient that when taking Dilantin, we need to teach the patient to have good dental hygiene because there can be, the patient can be prone for having gingival hyperplasia. And what is gingival hyperplasia? Basically, gingiva is gums and hyperplasia is inflammation. So it's basically inflammation of the gums. Now, I want to briefly go over benzodiazepines because it's one of the most common anti-seizure medications that we can encounter in the NCLEX exam. Now, benzodiazepines is mainly used for absent seizures. And when I say benzodiazepines for the NCLEX, always remember that the three most common benzodiazepine meds that end in the suffix PAM or PAM, which are clonazepam, lorazepam, and diazepam. Now, I will go over more of the important contents that we really need to know for our NCLEX exam on the next few videos. For the meantime, please visit me at www.allnursingnotes.com. That's www.allnursingnotes.com. Thank you so much and God bless.